today's Dr. Seuss science book is Oh Say Can You Say Dinosaur? All about dinosaurs. I'm the cat in the hat. You have met me before. Today I will speak of the great dinosaur. Dinosaurs lived on the earth long ago, before you and me. So how do we know? How do we know that dinosaurs lived so long ago, if it was before any of us were around? From fossils. Dinosaur teeth, eggs, and bone got stuck in the muck. Then that muck turned to stone. These fossils are old. They are dusty and worn because they were made long before you were born. Not hundreds of years, not thousands of years, but millions of years long before you were born. Dinosaur hunters dig in the ground. All over the earth these fossils are found. The hunters use tools to chip chip all day. The fossils come loose, then they pack them away. Fossils can crumble because they are old. So dinosaur hunters must first make a mold. To the dinosaur labs, every bone, tooth, and bit is carefully shipped to see how they fit. Is this a leg bone? Maybe a muzzle. It's a crazy mixed up dinosaur puzzle. Step up and enter the museum hall where dinosaurs stand. Some are big, some are small. Here we will play the best of all games. Oh say, can you say the dinosaur names? And after you've set them, you then get to see them in the Cat in the Hat's Super Dino Museum. Dinosaur names are not easy to read, but give it a try. I will help if you need. I think I may need some help too, trying to say the dinosaur names. All right, here's the first one. There's the name of the dinosaur. Oh, say, can you say Ankylosaurus? Say it, Ankylosaurus, with a club for a tail and a back full of spikes. This dino was strong, like an army tank. Yikes! Okay, now can you say Mayasaura? Mayasaura. There's one thing we know that this dino did best. She kept her kids cozy and safe in their nest. She kept the nest tidy. She got her kids food. She was a good mother to her dino brood. I know you know this one. Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'll bet you said that quite nicely. Now you'd better go. T-Rex is no kitten. I think you should know.
This T-Rex was strong with long teeth sharp as knives. When most dinos saw him, they ran for their lives. T-Rex was a hunter. He hunted for meat. Other dinos, dinosaurs, were his idea for a treat. Carnivore is the name that we give to dinos like this who ate meat to live. I bet you know this one too. Triceratops. Triceratops. This dinosaur's head had three horns upon it, sticking up out of a hard sort of bonnet. But though he was smaller and not half as fierce, his head was too hard for T Rex teeth to pierce. So after a few dozen snaps at his face, T Rex looked for dinner in some other place. Mm -hmm. See, bigger isn't always better. The T Rex had a very hard head. Uh, the Triceratops, rather, had a very hard head, so the T Rex could not bite it. So that saved the Triceratops from being eaten. And this dinosaur is Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus. I've gotten this rather tall ladder here for us to see eye to eye with Apatosaurus. These dinos' long necks reached up high into trees where they fed on green leaves just as much as they'd please. Herbivore is the name that we give to dinos like these who ate plants to live. Ready this name? Look at that one. Brachiosaurus. This dino was taller than 51 feet. And just how much food do you think he could eat? Nearly as much as a truckload of hay is what he would gobble day after day. That's how he grew to this size. As you see, the cat in the hat just comes up to his knee. Look at that. Only up to his knee. He's nowhere as smart as you or as me. His brain is the size of a small zucchini. Brachiosaurus. Oh, say, can you say Iguanodon? Iguanodon. What he did with his thumb, we think that we know, we think that he used it to jab at his foe. See, the iguanodon has like a, almost looks like a horn as a thumb. It was a way to protect itself. Now say, Dinonychus, Dinonychus. Terrible claw is what its name means. We think that this dinosaur hunted in teams. Oh, look at this one. Can you say Archaeopteryx? Archaeopteryx. This fine feathered friend is the earliest known. This bird might have glided. This bird might have flown. 
One thing we must ask, and we must be quite firm, if this bird was so early, <laughs> did he catch the worm? <laughs> There's an expression that the early bird gets the worm. So since this dinosaur bird was the very first, the early dinosaur, did it get the worm? <laughs> Funny joke. I don't think the worm is happy. It's getting late now. I see night is falling. The museum is closing. Your mother is calling. Before you at home, dear Sally and Dick, I have a surprise that is really quite slick. This dino's the earliest cat that is known. No one has seen it. It's never been shown. It's super terrific. It stands here before us. Oh, say, can you say? Ooh, what's in the bag? What super surprise does the cat in the hat have for us? It stands here before us. Oh, say, can you say, cat in the hatosaurus? <laughs> the cat in the hatosaurus. That one's not a real dinosaur, right? <laughs> and here's the glossary section because this book did have real information for us. It was nonfiction. So you can always pause the video and look at some of the words, have your family read them to you, or you try to read it. Now this wonderful book, there's two different types of activities of drawing and writing that you can do, and I'd love it if you would do both of them. One is to go back through the video and find which dinosaur seems to be your favorite and draw that dinosaur as best as you can and write a sentence to tell me why you like that dinosaur. Maybe your parents could take a picture of you with your work or even a video of you trying to say the name of the dinosaur and telling me something about it. The other thing is this book ended with a very imaginary dinosaur, a cat in the hatosaurus. So another activity would be for you to imagine and create your own dinosaur and give it a name and draw what it would li be like and what would it eat and where would it live and how would it take care of its little baby dinosaurs? And again, your family could take a picture of you with your work or even a video and they can send it on the dojo or they can email it to me. And any work you do while we are away from school, you and your family can be saving in your book bag, in your folders, and we'll take a look at it and share a lot of it when we get to see each other again. All right, until next time. Bye.